Good morning, everybody. October. Good to see everybody today. Let's hit it. Standing outside the door of love and mercy, you wonder if there's a place there for you. You know there's peace inside, but still you're searching for someone who understands the pain you've been through. While the door's unlocked, the lights are to hold you and to wipe the tears away while the Father waits with open arms. God is calling out your name. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you today. I'm Bev Spivey. I'm happy to minister here with my husband, Reverend Lawrence Palmer. And yeah, happy to have you here, honey. If we haven't met you yet, we look forward to speaking with you after the service and certainly during our fellowship time. So feel at home to our live streamers. First of all, we are so thankful John Guerin has us up and rolling again. And uh, welcome to our spiritual community this morning. You can encourage any friends or relatives who are out of town or when you're out of town or when you are here home in bed, don't feel guilty. Tune in to unitypompanobeach.org and our live stream is there all during the week. And then uh, after that, we have a YouTube channel. You can find us there also. So welcome everybody. And to our wonderful musicians under the direction of James McCoy. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you. Won't you please welcome Mr. Peter Wallace at the piano this morning, Mr. Orlando Machado at the drum set, and our featured soloist is Samantha Natalie Wallace. Let's see, we have, uh, we have music from Elvis Costello this morning, actually. Uh, actually, the songwriter was a guy called Nick Lowe that wrote the song. And then we're going to have some, we're going to have some old time church later. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks, James. All right, we get started with remembering all year long. Our theme has been and continues to be the courage to imagine. It is a power that we have, and as adults, sometimes we forget to use that. Not just imagining fantasies, but imagining every moment, every day, having just filled with joyful possibilities. So can you imagine a wonderful day today? Yeah. And a wonderful week ahead? OK. Let's keep going with that power of imagination. And this month, our theme for October is peace. So won't you join me in this affirmation together? 
I am the power of peace in all matters. And let us now remember why we're here, the vision that we've had for Unity of Pompano for these eight years, and this is our anniversary month. Join me, please. Centered in God, we create an ever-expanding spiritual community of one. In our mission statement together, we are a spiritual beacon of inspiration, abundance, and enlightenment. So let's close our eyes for a moment and join our energy, our hearts, our breath into this love-centered sanctuary so full of energy from this spiritual community that blesses it every week and in between. We open our hearts to this love as we embrace all peoples, as we welcome all who come through our doors. And we know that as we open our mind and hearts, we receive more and more of life itself. And we feel so very grateful for this life. And so it is. Amen. And our prayer for today, if you'll join me in it, is the prayer that unity has, unity worldwide, prayer for our nation. Together, we have faith in the love and wisdom of God within every person and every situation. We affirm that our country's citizens and its leaders are guided to positive, prosperous, harmonious action that manifests the highest good for all people. And so it is. Amen. And let's stand and sing. Here's a little song we got from the Wings of Song hymnal, one of the, one of the Unity hymns. But we do it like this here at Unity of Pompano. One. all clap our hands like that. Get the blood going. Let's all sing. I am the wisdom and power of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the wisdom and power of God. I am, I am, I am. Prosperity and Light of God, I am, I am, I am. I am the wonderful light of God, I am, I am, I am. The peace of God, the joy of God, serenity, harmony, rhythm of God. I am the wonderful light of God, I am, I am, I am. I am the radiant light of God, I am. The health of God, the strength of God, vitality, energy, vim of God. I am the radiant light of God. I am, I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. I am. We are. 
Jesus. That's right. Very good. You know, I say we're not your grandma's church. Some of you don't even recognize uh, the update from the hymnal, but I think you adapted some of the lyrics too, didn't you, James? Worked on them a little bit. Uh, yeah, we just uh, we kind of put it together like that. So yeah. it's nothing like what you find in Wings of Song, just letting you know. Speaking of Wings of Song, we are not using them anymore. Most uh, Unity churches are not using Wings of Song songbooks, hymnals. However, we have an opportunity to give them to uh, Haiti. Michelle Guerin is uh, arranging to have them gifted to Haiti. So we are keeping about 30 here for you. If any of you would like a hymnal, you are welcome to take it home. We will have it next week in our Hughes bookstore, which will be opening next week. And uh, several of our members are working on getting that together for you if you want to peek in there. It's, it's in Fellowship West, that room that's on the inside by where our lending library is. So that's something to look forward to next week. But let me first welcome everybody who's here for the very first time. If you would just raise your hand, we simply have a brochure to give you, what we call our welcome brochure. Welcome. If you keep your hand up till you get the brochure, it's so good to have you here. That will tell you about the Unity Movement, if you're not familiar with it. It will tell about this Unity Center and has a, a flyer in there to give your uh, information, your contact information, so that you can be on our mailing list and keep in touch with what's going on. All of these things are also on our website, unitypompanobeach.org. If you click on About Us, you can read all about Unity history, and you can read about the history of Unity of Pompano, which we resurrected and revitalized eight years ago this month. And uh, James and I and about a dozen more of you here that remember the stories, um, let the newer ones know in fellowship what we're all about. But we continue to be a happy, welcoming, thriving congregation, and all of you are welcome here. It's a charming origin story. Yes, it's charming. It really is. We'll do it next week, maybe. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Remin reminisce a little bit. Power in prayer. Every uh, Sunday before the service at 1030, we have prayer chaplains available. Our AC unit in the uh, prayer chapel is not working right now. It's out for service, and we are using the first office on your left for private individual prayer. And I believe a chaplain is stationed there this morning, is there, Ron? Somebody will be in there to pray with you if you would like some private prayer after the service. Uh, also, our chaplains will stand up in the aisleways at the end of the service and pray with you. There are prayer slips in the chair backs, in those folders. If you fill out the blue prayer slips, we would love to pray with you during the week. And then they're sent on to Unity Village, uh, where prayer is continuous there for a month. They have 24-7 prayer line answered by a live person. You may call that any time. If you wake up in the middle of the night or you're just having some anxious days, or even if you want to share joys, 1-800-NOW-PRAYER will put you in touch with someone who will pray with you. Okay, and we have several things going on. First of all, the Daily Word for November and December in large print is here. Uh, $6 if you would see Becky in the office. That's the second door on the left as you start down that hallway. Uh, we have a number of Daily Words for sale. Also, Sunday Sessions is today. That's right here in the sanctuary at 1230. Grab something to eat from the fellowship table. Come over here. And it's an hour of time with Reverend Lawrence when he will share more of his ideas on the theme of the month. And you are welcome to give your questions and comments and participate. So that's today at 1230. Mental wellness support group is something that we have had an outpouring of interest in. We've already had our 20 people sign up. 
because of the uh, type of group it is, we can't just leave it open-ended. But do go on the website. There's a link to register. We are taking uh, names for a wait list. And we will have another session in November and another one in December and probably beyond that. Uh, this group will meet once a month, but you can come in and out of it. You can go to one session or more. It is not deep therapy, but it certainly is a therapy type of, uh, it's called rapid resolution, and it's very much unity in that you identify what it is that's upsetting you in your own world. Uh, it can be anything from the social climate, the political climate, family relationships, things coming up with the holidays. So take advantage of that support group. Sunday, October 21st, will be our true celebration of our eighth year together. How many were here in 2010? Yes, wonderful. And we so welcome everybody else who's joined us since then, and we're just uh, thrilled to celebrate with the guest speaker of the day will be none other than the CEO of our Unity Worldwide Movement uh, out of Kansas City, Reverend Donna Johnson, who is a minister. She led a church for a number of years before taking this very important role at Unity Village. She will be with us. Uh, afterwards, we will have a potluck to celebrate our eight years together. I believe we have a slide on that, Harold. Yes. Eight years, we're celebrating this wonderful community. The church itself is more than 50 years old uh, and went into a decline and abandonment. So we are thrilled to have what we have now. And that will all be next Sunday. So please bring your potluck dishes. Stay. Reverend Johnson will eat lunch with the board in the children's room. And then she'll be available for a question and answer session. So if you have some questions about the unity movement itself, the direction we're going, she will be happy to address those. She's a wonderful woman. So I hope you all can come out and show her who we are and also meet her. And then that's the end. I'm going to take the kids for Sunday school. The rest of you, see you later. Everyone, please stand and greet your neighbor.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Olga Rodriguez, and I have the honor of reading the daily word for today. And that is prosperity. And the affirmation is, I am grateful for the many ways prosperity expresses in my life. And it reads, my prospering thoughts find expression in my life in many ways. I enjoy an abundance of love, peace, health, and happiness. And I pause regularly each day to appreciate my many blessings. The same blessings express wherever I focus my creative thinking on my finances. No matter what my ego mind may insist, I know that I have nothing to fear. I am one with divine mind, and fear has no place in my consciousness. I like that a lot. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to read that again. I am one with divine mind, and fear has no place in my consciousness. I am guided quickly and easily to choices that will lead to financial prosperity in my life. In quiet moments of meditation throughout the day, I appreciate the ways in which my life is prospered now and I call upon my gratitude to gently dissolve any sense of lack I may perceive. And the scripture for today comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and it reads, The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Right now, as the prayer chest comes forward, we'd like to begin a time of prayer and meditation by singing together, I'm at peace. I am at peace. I am I invite you now to settle into that very comfortable and familiar position for your body. And as you do so, you can give your body permission to relax, to let go, to let be. And with that loving permission, your body will immediately move its focus from the outer to the inner. You can also give your mind that same loving permission to be still, to be serene. And immediately your mind will relax. 
So with body at ease and mind at ease, your awareness is free to fully commune with spirit. For some of you, that will mean profound stillness. And for some, a time of light and color and images and inspiration and ideas. It is your time. Claim it and accept it. So as you are still, your awareness sinks into that deep of your heart where you so clearly meet spirit. You are immersed in that blessed oneness of truth, in the presence of being, pure being. So as we have so prepared, I invite you now to give yourself into the care of spirit and follow that light that is within you together. Now, as you prepare to move your awareness back to this place and this time, you know that even an instant during which your awareness is immersed in that deep of your heart, that healing and transformation take place. And you know that you can bring with you into your body, your mind, your heart, the essence of this experience in the stillness. You can hold it there. And in this coming week, anytime you choose, you can simply take a breath, and bring back again this experience and be blessed all over again. So with a deep sense of gratitude for this amazing experience and the stillness being together, I invite you now to take a deep, slow breath in through your nose and hold it for a moment. Then exhale slowly, deliberately through your mouth. 
And when you're ready, open your eyes and we will sing together. Alleluia. As I walk through this wicked world, searching for light in the darkness of insanity, I ask myself. Is all hope lost? Is there only pain and hatred and misery? And each time I feel like this inside, there's one thing I want. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Who? What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? And as I walked on. Troubled times, my spirit gets so downhearted sometimes. So, where are the strong? And who are the trusted? And where
So where are the strong? And who are the trusted? And where is the harmony? Sweet so funny about peace, love, and understanding. Oh, 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 what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Yeah. Understanding, understanding, brother, understanding, sister, what's so funny about it? That's Samantha Natalie. It's the music of Nick Lowe. Me too. You can just get, get to just sit there and enjoy it and soak it up. Now, yeah, some of us have to go to work. <laughs> we are looking at peace during this month. I shared with you last week the principle of peace. And this week, I want to look at the practice of peace. Now, most of you have heard of Unity's five basic principles. And they are not five principles that are set in stone, and this is exactly what it is. They're five of the great principles that guide our Unity movement. The, the fifth, traditionally, is that of manifestation or demonstration. Sometimes it's said, thoughts held in mind demonstrate after their kind. Right? So it means that what's going on needs to be put in place out there in motion. And this fifth principle comes into play this morning. We'll get to that in just a moment. Now, I shared with you last week that peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is not an agreement not to kill each other anymore. Peace is not a document that defines where borders are. Peace is not these things in the outer. At best, these things are a manifestation of peace because peace is a state of consciousness. Peace is a state of mind, a state of awareness that is within us. And that's where this, all of this other stuff starts. You can sign all the peace accords you want to. You can create all the treaties you want to. You can build as many walls as you want to. You can set up as many armed guards as you want to. But there will not be peace if it hasn't begun in here and if it's not coming from here. And that's something we need to learn. Now, don't you dare say, oh, yes, the politicians need to learn that. The world leaders need to learn that. Who needs to learn it? Every one of us. Because I'm going to remind you over and over again that peace starts right here, right now. Peace in the Middle East starts right here, right now. Peace in the countries that have civil war going on starts right here, right now with you and with me. And I say that not to be pointing my finger and judging or whatever else. I say that to empower you, to remind you of this great truth that peace, peace is ours, as we're going to see as we go along. Now, again, last, last week we talked about the principle of peace. And to me, having the information is not... It's a beginning place, but it's not quite all of it. So how do we put it into practice? How do we use peace? If we understand what peace is not and what peace is, well, so what? What do we do with it then? We sit around and pat ourselves on the back because we're so smart. And it's good that we're smart. That certainly is important, better than the alternative. But it's not enough. So what do we do with it now? So I want to suggest to you this morning three ways that we practice peace. Now, the one of these, the first of these ways, and I'll come to some, some um, comments and I mean some uh, quotes in just a minute. 
one of the, first, the first of these ways is to be peace. To be peace. Now, some people think we get peace. Some people think we make peace. But again, the beginning of all of that is being peace, embodying peace. Peace is a spiritual principle. It's not something you get and carry around in a basket. It is a spiritual principle that is part of our beingness. It is not separate from us and it is always within us. The problem is not recognizing it and not knowing that it's there and that we can use it. Being peace means that we see ourselves as peace. Everywhere we go, that peace goes. Every word we speak is, is drenched in that peace. Every thought we think is soaked in that peace. It is within us at all times. And if we live peace, if we be peace, the world will be different. If that is our awareness, if that is our understanding, if that is our practice, of when we go out knowing that we are peace, regardless of wherever we are. If I have that awareness of being peace, I can be in the middle of a civil war and still there will be peace in me and in principle. If I am holding that consciousness of being peace, then I can be in the middle of a confrontation. I can have someone calling me dirty names. I can have someone trying to harm me. But yet that peace will be present because it is in me. And that will make a difference in some way or another. If nothing else, in how you perceive what's going on around you. And how you judge what is going on around you. It will be different if we do that from a place of being peace. Now there have been many great people who have lived, who have come from that place. Let me mention just two of them. One of them is, of course, Mother Teresa. You know much of her story is how she began life as a nun very early on. And then she went out and formed her own organization because she wanted to minister to those who were dying. She was at one point criticized because she wasn't doing something to change the conditions that produced the poor people who were dying. And she said that essentially, this is a, a crude paraphrase, but she said, that's somebody else's job. I know what is mine to do. And mine to do is to help these people who are dying. Holding people's hands while they died. Feeding people who were starving to death. Doing all kinds of amazing things. And when she gained the notoriety, she didn't really like it. She was a very shy person. The Pope gave her a limousine. And she sold it and bought food for the poor. <laughs> And she just wanted to help. She just wanted to serve. And one of the things that she said is, the miracle is not that we do this work, but that we are happy in it. She was being peace everywhere she went. And that's the thing that people said about her who met her, who knew her, that she embodied the love that she gave people. She embodied peace. And did Mother Teresa make a difference in our world? Yes, she did. Another great one of living and being peace was Thich Nhat Hanh the Buddhist monk who has come to notoriety in, in recent years, uh, some wonderful books out and, and does a wonderful ministry. He was in Vietnam and he, he was a, a priest, a Buddhist priest. And in their tradition, his tradition, the Buddhists did mostly meditating all the time. And that was their way of ministering to the world. And in the midst of the war that broke out there and people dying and people being hurt, he went out of his convent, he went out of his sheltered life and got out into the world and he began what was called engaged Buddhism. This was a little different in his tradition. Saying, let's go out, let's do something. Not just sit here and meditate, but let's go do something. And he began a whole movement of engaged Buddhism. And he went out into the world and helped people. And he said, only by establishing peace in yourself can you be helpful in contributing to peace. Being peace is the basis for doing peace and making peace. So one way that we practice this principle, this powerful principle of peace, is to be peace, to live peace. Now another way that we practice this peace is by honoring diversity. Now, I did some research on this. It was really fascinating. Scientists have found that this this reaction that we have to situations, to people, to all living things that are different from us is hardwired in us. It's really not something we learn. It's, it's part of who we are. And it's part of the old survival part of ourselves. That, that 
hardwired perspective of staying alive. Who was it? John Travolta did that? Staying alive, staying alive. Yeah. There's a lot of metaphysics in that. Yeah, I, I never learned how to do that. Yeah. Well, there is a sense in which that song is running through our heads all the time. Staying alive, staying alive, staying alive. And there was a time when that was really, really important. When humankind lived under dangerous circumstances, challenging circumstances. But by and large, I know it's not universally true, unfortunately, yet. But by and large, we don't live in a dangerous world. I mean, when's the last time you really feared that before you got home tonight, you were going to be killed? I mean, the traffic's pretty bad down here, but... <laughs> But really, we, most of humankind lives now in a different place. We don't need that song running through our heads of staying alive, staying alive. We don't need to worry about survival. Yet it's hardwired into us. And when we look at a person who's a different color, we look at a person who has, speaks differently, has a different language, we look at a person with some kind of physical or emotional handicap, they're different from us, and something in us goes, no, I've got to watch out, I've got to be careful here, I've got to survive. You don't have to worry about surviving anymore. Humankind lives at another level of consciousness and those things aren't important for us. Yes, it's hardwired in us, but we have the awareness of ourselves within us to say, no, this is something old that I don't need anymore. I don't have to worry about this anymore. When I played football in high school, loved it, enjoyed it immensely. But when I play football, what do you do? You put on gear, you put on pads and your helmet and cleats and forearm pads so you don't hurt your arm when you hit somebody in the head. Isn't that brutal? I'm embarrassed that I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> but after you play the game, what do you do? You take the gear off. You don't walk around with a football uniform on all the time. I've played with some guys who would have if we'd let them. But you don't need it anymore. You're not playing football. And we need to come to that understanding in our minds and bring it to the forefront of our minds. We're not living in a world where survival is the number one concern for us. There are human beings that still live under those conditions. But I dare say nobody who's hearing my voice and even on the live stream has to live a day worried about that, worried about surviving. So we don't need those old ancient impulses that rise up within us when we face something different or someone different. We have the capability to say no. I know what the situation is. I know who I am. I know who this person is. They're different from me. Wow, isn't that interesting? So instead of being afraid, we can be embracing. Instead of being terrified, we can be fascinated by the people who are different from us. It's always so interesting, to, especially in South Florida, to, to listen to people's languages, especially in the grocery store. I, I, I do all our shopping. I know you're terribly surprised by that. <laughs> I do all the grocery shopping. And I love when I'm walking through the grocery store listening to people. And you hear it being in South Florida and tourists and there, you hear all kinds of interesting languages. And it's so amazing to hear that. Now, what is hardwired in us is to hear another language and go, oh my goodness, this is different for me. I don't know what this is, so it scares me. We don't have to do that anymore. It's perfectly safe to listen to someone else's language and say, wow, that's cool. It's perfectly safe to look at someone who's obviously from a different part of the world and say, wow, that's cool, that's all right. My first, my first day in college <laughs> was an interesting experience. I grew up in a tiny little hick town in Mississippi. Never was exposed to anybody besides blacks and whites and Choctaw Indians. And I get to Mississippi State University, which is an engineering school and has people from all over the world coming there and all kinds of different people dressing in all kinds of different ways, speaking different languages, looking different from me, acting different from me. And I would just walk around my mouth hanging open for about the first month I was in college because this was all so new, but it was wonderful to be exposed to that, to have that experience. So when we come from a place of being peace, we don't have to be afraid of diversity. We can honor it. We can celebrate it. We can welcome it. We can embrace it. And to say, you may be different from me on the outer, but we're the same. There's only one of us here. 
And you are a part of that and I'm a part of that. And underneath all the obvious differences, we are the same. We are spiritual beings. And this makes a difference when we have this perspective. When you go out into the world with the awareness that you don't have to be afraid, you radiate that. Even scientists beyond the mystics now, the scientists are telling us that there's a bioenergetic field around the human body. And I've heard different estimates as to how big it is. Some say it's like 27 feet around us. That's a field of energy that's there all the time. If you can imagine, you've seen pictures with auras. You've heard about auras. and You've heard, seen halos around the saints. It's that same thing. There's a field of energy that's around us. And I think about that all the time. Again, going back to the grocery store, I'm bopping through the grocery store, and everybody I meet goes through my field of energy. And on some level, however minute it may be, on some level, whatever's in my energy field affects those people who walk through it. So what am I carrying around? If I'm carrying around the excitement of embracing diversity, that's what those people are going to be touched with when they walk through my energy field. So when we go out into the world, we carry that with us. And it's even bigger than that. Because when we get connected to another person who's connected to another person who's connected to another person, what it really ends up with is that every person on earth is connected to everybody else. You've heard about the seven degrees of separation? Is it seven? seven. How many? Six. Six, seven, do I hear nine? We, live, we are all very closely connected. So when I carry around in my energy field, in my consciousness, being peace and honoring diversity, that's what I'm putting out into the world. That's what I am putting out into the world. That is what you are putting out into the world. We don't have to depend on a politician somewhere to do that. We don't have to depend on an ambassador to do that. We don't have to depend on a military to do that. We do that, every one of us, right now, even now. The thoughts that you are thinking, the things that you are feeling are radiating out from you and going out into our world and touching our world and affecting peace. A couple of quotes. One from Desmond Tutu, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I met him one time. He's an interesting character. He loves the ladies. <laughs> he was very flirtatious, but he's a, he's a great soul. He said, let us celebrate our diversity and give the world that threatens to disintegrate hope that it is possible for those who are different in all kinds of ways to cohere as a community. Dream, dream, and then go for it. We are together. We are one. And the Dalai Lama, I met him the same time I met Desmond Tutu. At the end of the presentation, people had submitted questions and I discovered the Dalai Lama had a sense of humor. Um, someone wrote a question and said, I have a, a 10-year-old grandson I just can't seem to control and he won't mind, he won't do anything. I says, what can I do? <laughs> and Dalai Lama's response was, I think I'd get a stick. <laughs> and of course, the whole place just broke up. He said, ultimately, humanity is one and this small planet is our only home. If we are to protect the home of ours, this home of ours, each of us needs to experience a vivid sense of universal altruism and compassion. Holding peace, being peace, living peace. That will bring about peace in our world. Now, not only do we be peace, and not only do we honor diversity, but there's also the practice of choosing nonviolence. Now, most of us are going to say, well, that's no problem. I'm not a violent person. I haven't hit anybody in the nose in quite some time. And I'm not verbally abusive to anybody. I don't have to worry about that. You know, it's coming, don't you? There are so many ways of being violent that aren't obvious. And sometimes the subtle ways are even worse than the overt violence. Each one of us can make a decision to be nonviolent in our actions, in our thoughts, in our feelings. And you remember I was talking about a moment ago this energy field that is around you that carries all of what you think and feel and plan to do? What about those little bitty thoughts? I'd like to kick them in the shins. <laughs> my, my way of saying that and being authentic is to, I'd like to stick my finger in their eye because that's a very unpleasant experience. And I, I admit that happens every once in a while. I don't live there, though. 
And it's more and more rare that those kind of thoughts go through my mind. Because being peace and living in that experience changes the way you think. It changes the way you feel. And it makes a difference about nonviolence. Reminds me of a story. There was a Quaker living his Quaker life, and one night this thief broke into his house. And he was going through the house, and he walks around the corner, and here stands the Quaker with a shotgun. And as you know, Quakers are pacifist, nonviolent, and everything. Well, the Quaker looks at the man and says, Sir, I would not harm thee for the world, but thou standest where I'm about to shoot. There are ways of being present without being violent. There are ways to be authentic, to be real, to be practical, and still be nonviolent. We've had many leaders down through the years who've done so much to change that, to affect that. But you and I, in our ordinary lives, right down here in South Florida, right here, right now, can participate in that as well. Some of you may be involved in some organization that that promotes nonviolence. Some of you may end up creating an organization that deals with nonviolence. You may write a letter to the editor. You might write an article, whatever it is. But your consciousness makes a difference in the consciousness of this planet. And when we choose nonviolence, it makes a difference. When I live in a consciousness of nonviolence, it makes it easier for you to do that. And when two of us hold the consciousness of nonviolence, it makes it easier for the third one to do it. And when three of us do it, it makes it easier for the fourth one to do it. Did you get the picture? And it goes on and on and on. So that choice to honor others and not be violent in any fashion, a word spoken with the intent to hurt is violence. A thought held about another can be violent. So let us be very careful, not judgmental, not paranoid, not worried about God's going to punish us if we do this, but choose nonviolence because that is true to our nature. That is consistent with the deepest part of who and what we are is to live in a nonviolent world. Now, again, there have been many leaders that have spoken about nonviolence and acted in that way. One was Thoreau. Thoreau as a young man chose the simple life and he went to his life in on Walden Pond and of course wrote about that experience. But he was very much involved in nonviolent endeavors. And once he was arrested for some of his nonviolent responses and uh, Emerson came to see him who was his good friend and Emerson said, what are you doing in there? And Thoreau said, what are you doing out there? Which was an interesting question. He wrote uh, uh, an essay called Civil Disobedience, which became a classic in the realm of nonviolence. And it affected um, Gandhi and it affected Martin Luther King, both in their perspective of nonviolence. But Thoreau said, civil disobedience is an act of protesting and injustice by openly, openly disobeying an unjust law and willingly accepting the consequences. He didn't say go burn the courthouse down. He didn't say go kill those who want to hurt you. He encouraged civil disobedience, nonviolent resistance to that which was not just, that which was not true. And he carried a powerful message and died as a very young man, unfortunately. But his work affected so many others after him. And again, Gandhi being one of them. And you know the story of Gandhi and his great work in India and uh, with Pakistan and India and South Africa. Gandhi was the one who said, and this has been attributed to other people as well, but Gandhi said, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Be peace, live peace, choose nonviolence. And then, of course, Martin Luther King, Jr. And his, in modern times, we have much more of his material, but his I Have a Dream speech is known by people all over the world. Martin Luther King said, our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power. We have guided missiles and misguided men. I wish I had said that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Choosing 
Nonviolence is peace. So again, I, I tell you, as I will continue during this whole month, peace is not something in the outer. Peace is a state of consciousness, a state of being, a state of awareness. And we practice peace by being peace, by honoring diversity, by respecting others, by choosing nonviolence. Now, we don't have to wait on the next politicians that come along. We don't have to wait for the next generation who are going to approach this matter of peace in the world differently. Right now, right here, every one of us has the authority, we have the power, and we have the opportunity to affect peace on this earth, on this planet, by practicing peace for yourself. Right now, I am peace. I am peace. I am peace. How many of you have been to our candle lighting service at Christmas time? You know how that feels when we're in darkness and we light one candle. And then we light two and we light three and it goes on. And what, what, what's it like at the end of the service? There's this wonderful warm glow filling this place. That's what we just did. Every one of us said, I am am peace and the light of that and the power of that has radiated outward from this place out into our world in waves of light and waves of love. That's what you just did. Let's do it all the time. Let's be conscious about it. Let's be deliberate about it and wake up in the morning and say I am peace. And in this day, I will be peace everywhere I go and everything I do, no matter the circumstances in the outer, I am peace. And I will respect others and I will live in a nonviolent way and you have changed the world. Let's keep doing it together. And God bless you, my friend. Although my voice is loud enough, I'm sure I could shout out. I want to use the microphone so you all definitely hear how happy we are that you're here today, how grateful we are for your gifts, your time, your talent, all the volunteers that helped us with the bathroom project. We are now finalized. All the permits have been met and approved and inspected. Next week, we will be open. If you're new with us, know that we started the permit process at the beginning of February, uh, and it took five months to get the first permit to get started. So our contractors did a great job, and we are now thrilled and happy to have bathrooms in this building. So your gifts, many of you pledged to uh, give a little extra to support that project. Thank you for doing that, and those of you that maybe haven't had an opportunity to give a little extra to support that project, we'd appreciate it since the final bill is due now. And uh, just in general, we thank you for your giving to Unity of Pompano, and we are so grateful that uh, we can all share in the joy of running this facility ourselves. So thank you all. Won't you hold your gift in your hand, and let's do a blessing together. With a grateful heart, I acknowledge God as source of all that is. Today, I declare good for myself and all others. Good is mine. Good and more good is mine. And ever-increasing good is mine. Everywhere I go, I see this good. I feel it. I experience it. I freely give it and it multiplies itself around me, and so it is.
New heights I'm gaining every day But still I'm praying as I'm heaven bound yeah. Plant my feet on higher ground Lord lift me up and let me stay Sunday school kids, a couple of them may want to come up. Praise, are you coming? Yep, she said. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. James, if, if we could have the music without your voices, Praise wants to sing it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Right. And if you look closely at this young man, you will, you will recognize Brian Page, who he and his sister, seven years ago, sat through sanctuary till a few kids came and we started Sunday school. Welcome back, uh. Brian. Now in 10th grade. I think you came as a third or fourth grader. Yeah, absolutely, elementary school. Anyway, let's all stand and enjoy this day. Be all about peace as we go out today, as we bless each other with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God surrounds us. I am the power of God. The place of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and well is well. Let there be peace. 
Thank you.